the adults in the community are failing our kids. You just see a whole bunch of cops running through the back with like big guns and stuff and no high schooler should ever deal with that. Three people have been shot this semester and it's, it's just crazy. It's horrifying, but it's not surprising though. It keeps happening. I'm angry. I'm angry with our system because I don't think our system does enough to protect our kids. It, it's got to stop. We can't take it anymore. Like we're parents. Like we need to do something. This should never, as a parent, I can tell you, never be a concern of a parent. Here, obviously, they're frustrated and they're angry, as they should be. Nothing trumps the safety of our young people in this building and this faculty and staff and we feel for them. I think it's clear now that we need to do even more interdiction with our police officers inside the buildings uh, in these type of situations. Sometimes you just wake up, you don't know if you're next. I'm tired, how many school shootings do we have to have? You know, this is gonna affect our kids the rest of their lives. This is something they don't just forget. Good evening. Thank you for joining us on Denver 7 News at 6 tonight. I'm Shannon Ogden. And I'm Jessica Porter. Tonight, tragedy again at East High School. The school making national headlines after two school administrators were shot on campus. All right, so let's break down what we know here at 6 o'clock. Police are still looking for the 17-year-old shooting suspect. His name's Austin Lyle. Police say Lyle shot the administrators while he was being patted down in the front office. And that's because of a safety precaution in place just for him. Police have located the car. They believe Lyle fled the school in. This is a live look at where that car was found in a rural area of Park County. People living in a five mile radius of that scene that police have only identified as Bailey are being told to shelter in place. Our photojournalist is on scene and monitoring any developments there are from police. And these are the two people injured today. Gerald Mason and Eric Sinclair, both listed as deans on the East High School website. Now, Denver Health tells us that Sinclair, he's the one on the left, still in serious condition. But just within the last hour, we have learned that Mason there on the right is out of the hospital and recovering at home. Some good news there at Absolutely. six o'clock and we have comprehensive team coverage for you tonight. Let's begin with Denver 7's Rob Harris, who's tracking the very latest on the suspect's search. Rob. Yeah, so I did confirm that the suspect Austin Lyle was formerly a student at Overland High School. That's in the Cherry Creek School District. He was expelled last year, but we don't know why. What the district told me is that he had violated board policy. We also know that Austin Lyle was put on what's called a school safety plan here at East High School, and that's why he was being patted down and searched in the front office at the beginning of each school day. Police tell us a weapon was never found on him during searches until today. The district would not say why Lyle was placed on a school safety plan, but they did say this when asked what they're used for overall. It's very nuanced and it's particular their individual, so it's based on uh, past behavior and that's as far as I can feel comfortable saying. So it, it's uh, as a result of, of previous behavior. This is common for all schools in all districts. It's, it's part of what we have in terms of making sure that we can support the needs and behavioral uh, needs of students. So it's very common across the nation. Now, once again, Denver police are still searching for Austin Lyle. Pictures from police of Lyle and the style of SUV he may have been driving are on your screen. If you've seen him or where you know where he is, you should call Metro Denver Crime Stoppers at 720-913-7867, and you can remain anonymous with your tip. Obviously, East High School has been dealing with so much emotion and exhaustion from gun violence, and we we're really hearing and seeing that from students and parents today. I want to send it over to Bayon Wang, who is talking with them. Bayon. Yeah, Rob, our crew was out here all morning long as the situation was developing, and one of the first things parents and students told us was that they were just trying to evaluate how serious of a situation this was considering how many lockdowns and lockouts and public safety threats this campus has experienced within this school year alone. Let's go ahead and pull up some footage from a little bit earlier so we kind of get a sense of the police presence here. Law enforcement 
was in full gear. Students were slowly released to their parents who showed up by the dozens, absolutely frantic. And unfortunately, it's a type of anxiety that they're used to. In September, if you recall, there was a shooting involving teenagers that injured a 14-year-old East High School student right across the street from the school at the Carla, Carla Madison Recreation Center. That family tells us he was shot in the face. Then in February, another student, 16-year-old Luis Garcia, was shot near the school. He died about two weeks later. That was around the time the school experienced a threat of violence that was unsubstantiated, but still very scary for them. And finally, students have to deal with the shooting today. Several students and parents speaking out, unfortunately, once again. We're just kind of numb to it at this point since this has happened so much, um, like second time this month, I think. It's, it's insane. It's really not fair at all. I can't even walk outside my house without feeling like I'm going to die or I'm going to get shot. And it's terrifying for everyone. This is the third major, fourth major incident here at East High. The Denver School Board is failing us and it's really a problem. So clearly these students, these parents, they are so, so frustrated. They are so, so fed up. They are tired of this and they're demanding for change. Guys. We are all tired of this. Uh, Bion, thank you very much. You and Rob out there. And tonight we're learning that all Denver high schools now will get armed officers at schools in response to today's shooting. Those officers will remain on campus through the entire school year. Denver 7's chief investigative reporter Tony Kovaleski joins us live in the studio now looking deeper into the issue of SROs. And Tony, many parents that we spoke to today at East High School were bringing up the lack of SROs on Denver Public Schools campuses. It's clearly a polarizing issue. It's clearly an issue that evokes a lot of emotion. This issue of resource officers has been a lightning rod of controversy. It's a question that has been asked and answered many times, including last month when our team talked to school board VP A.N.T. Anderson. Are you willing to have that conversation to reintroduce SROs to DPS campuses? No. SROs will not be coming back to the Denver Public Schools. That was an interview from last month, just days after the third violent incident at East High School. As of this point, SROs will not be coming back. Back in 2020, Ayante Anderson was one of the leaders in removing SROs from Denver Public Schools, a position held by many, but in the shadow of another shooting, Denver leaders are now rethinking that position. Why is this so divisive, do you think? Well, I don't think it's going to be divisive after today. I told Director Anderson that uh, the policy is unacceptable. I understood what he was trying to do, but it's not working. Former Denver Mayor Wellington Webb acted quickly, calling for action, calling for change. The police need to be put back in the schools. The SROs need to be put back in the schools. And also after the shooting, Denver's current mayor, Michael Hancock, amplified that position in this social media posting, writing, it's time to return school resource officers in our schools. Removing them was a mistake, and we must move swiftly to correct it. A position also shared by Stacy Hervey. And most students, if you really talk to them, do not feel safe at school. She's a mom of a former East High student, a teacher in DPS, and an expert in law enforcement. I think when school resource officers are used appropriately, they can prevent crime. Now, we reached out to DPS School Board Director, Vice President Ann Tay Anderson this afternoon, and he responded. Quote, I had emergency surgery yesterday. My comments will be tomorrow during the board meeting. I am monitoring the situation while I recover, and I hope to be there tomorrow in person. Clearly, this is an issue that has percolated to the top of Denver's political screen. Jessica? It absolutely has, Tony. And many students, parents, even teachers don't think SROs are the answer. There were some real concerns that led to SROs being banned. Yeah, that is true. The question was, were they properly used in DPS? There were stats that showed that some students were being targeted. There were questions about administrators using the SROs for discipline instead of safety. We even talked to Stacey Hervey about it, and, and you heard her say, if they're used properly, they can be affected. If they're misused, and that's clearly what led to what happened in 2020, then change is necessary. 
Now everything is back on the board, and we'll see how everybody reacts in the weeks to come. It's a Jessica. delicate balance. Thank you, Tony. Well, every night here on Denver 7 News at 6, we've been bringing you Tony's coverage of all 16 candidates running for Denver mayor. And we have reached out to each candidate for their statement on today's shooting. We have those up on our website, denver7.com, and we plan to resume our stories highlighting each candidate tomorrow.